There was a time when all I had was a mattress and a lamp. For a few weeks, I lived as a hardcore minimalist. But the irony is, I didn't even know what minimalism was at the time. The reason was much simpler. For my job, I had to relocate to a new city. So I decided to move there too. However, I was only able to move in all my stuff a few weeks after receiving the keys. I was so done with the commute though, that I decided I would be fine with just a mattress and a lamp for those weeks. I was quite surprised to notice how happy I felt. Part of that was the joy of a fresh start. Having a new place without roommates for the first time. But another part of that joy came from being in this empty room. I had nothing to do. I didn't even have a laptop or a smartphone at the time. I would read a book or I would daydream, visualizing what I could do with the apartment. At the time, I didn't know about the concept of minimalism. So a couple of weeks later, my place was full of stuff. And over the years, I accumulated even more. But recently, I embraced minimalism. Unexpectedly. The first step was getting a new couch. My current apartment was already furnished when I moved in. But I had started to grow more and more discontent with the two couches that came with it. I only used one of the two and I didn't even enjoy sitting on that one. So I decided to replace them with one new couch. Seeing the old couches being carried out of my apartment was exhilarating, like a weight being lifted off my shoulders. Sitting on my new couch, I decided to really go for a fresh start and also paint the walls. This is what really brought minimalism into my life. I had to store all the clutter away to free up the walls. When it was done, I was super excited. The apartment felt so fresh, so light. It brought back to mind those weeks many years ago when all I had was just that mattress and one lamp. Coming full circle, I decided to really embrace the minimalist lifestyle. So here are three ways in which minimalism has changed my life. One, removing clutter creates more space for things you really care about. Initially, my impression of a minimalist was that of someone who owns just one spoon, has one t-shirt and lives in a 10 square meter apartment. However, when I started studying minimalism more, I realized that minimalism isn't just about getting rid of things. In his book Goodbye Things, Japanese minimalist Fumio Sasaki writes, For a minimalist, the object isn't to reduce, it's to eliminate distractions so they can focus on the things that are truly important. And Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, better known as the minimalists, define minimalism as a tool to rid yourself of life's excess in favor of focusing on what's important, so you can find happiness, fulfillment and freedom. I'm still very much a beginner on this path. I own a whopping four spoons and I do not use shampoo to do the dishes. Yet, I've taken my first steps and gotten rid of a lot of excess stuff already. And what I found is that the things I really care about are now able to take center stage. These items spark joy in me, a concept introduced by Mary Kondo in her book The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. For example, when I enter the living room in the morning, the first thing I now see is my new couch. And it makes me happy every single time because I vividly remember the last few years without it. Another example is this watercolor painting. Not only is it really good, and does it work well with the colors of the living room, but it was also created by my dad. When I was a teenager, we didn't always get along. These days, we are much closer though, and seeing this watercolor painting daily is a subtle way to connect with my dad. Removing clutter has allowed these objects to shine. In that sense, less is indeed more. 2. Empty space creates headspace. The second way in which minimalism has changed my life is the calm state of mind it brought on. The empty space literally created headspace. Initially, I planned to fill the room with new stuff after I'd gotten rid of the old things. But as the days passed, I noticed a feeling of spaciousness inside. It was actually kind of scary because it completely killed my productivity for a while. I just went about my day very slowly. I picked up my meditation practice again, something I've been neglecting for a long time. I went to bed earlier and woke up earlier too. I'm not sure if this is going to stick, but it felt good. One thing I really resonate with is the idea of the silent to-do list in the book Goodbye Things. It basically means that our possessions want to be cared for, and they tell us that every time we look at them. You look at your TV and it says, you seem bored, why don't you watch the next episode on Netflix? Also, can you please dust me off? 
a stack of dirty dishes is like, hey, we don't get clean all by ourselves. Or you look at all the messy cables on the floor and boom, they whisper, you were gonna organize this two weeks ago. We clearly can count on you. The more possessions we have, the longer the silent to-do list. And it can get to a point where all the menial tasks take up so much headspace that we can't get around to doing what's really important to us. If we cut down on our possessions though, these silent messages will become fewer as well. Prioritizing these messages then gets easier. And if we do receive a message or two, we have the capacity to respond right away. This is real freedom. If you're interested in learning more about the silent to-do list, I did an entire video dedicated to it, which I will link to up here. Three, being more intentional. The third improvement minimalism brought to my life is living with more intention. What I mean is that instead of running on autopilot half of the day, I do my best to give the thing I'm doing in the moment all of my attention. For example, when I'm making a cup of coffee, I focus only on that. When I'm working on a YouTube video, I put my phone out of sight or on the other side of the room. Alexander Graham Bell said, concentrate all your thoughts upon the work at hand. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. With fewer things in my environment vying for my attention, focusing becomes easier. But at the same time, I am a creature of habit. And for many years, I was addicted to my phone, checking emails, social media. At times, it was even really difficult to focus when reading a book because of my racing mind. These days, we are bombarded with so much information, it's important to be vigilant. By living with more intention, I practice this one moment at a time. And with each successful attempt, I'm solidifying this new habit. In his book Atomic Habits, James Clear says something that I find very powerful. Your identity emerges out of your habits. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you want to become. He recommends a two-step process. Decide the type of person you want to be, and then prove to yourself with small wins. So the most practical way to change who you are is to change what you do. And it doesn't need to be perfect. If you look at any political election, no party or person receives all the votes. There are always going to be votes for both sides. But you don't need a unanimous vote to win an election. You just need a majority. It's the same when building habits. It's okay if, through your actions, you cast a few votes for the wrong side. That's not the end of the world. Your goal is simply to win the majority of the votes. This helps me to not be too rigid and beat myself up whenever I slip, which will inevitably happen. And by trying to be more intentional, I'm cultivating a sense of awareness that will ultimately make it easier to notice when I'm heading in the wrong direction. And hopefully, change course in time. So those are three ways in which minimalism has improved my life. I'm still learning and figuring things out. So please hit the subscribe button below and like this video if you want to follow me on this journey and see more content just like this. And please let me know in the comments below, how has minimalism impacted your life? Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.